and I will come to the more um, the They can't see me. I'm, I'm not showing my face right now. The internet connection is unstable. I know that when it tells you that. Yes, yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to think all around my house and flash and I'm like, where is it located? Um, don't show that. Similar members of very active society members like community and are you having difficulty getting on? Well, I can't hear anything, so the volume needs to go up. Well, it's probably not the volume. It's on Friday the twenty fifth of the day. Canada. My down the way on the phone. Oh, I did. I had that. I didn't know that. For, oh, I did that for a long yeah, time. That's good. Yeah. I stopped getting calls because yeah. I never answered them anymore. And that's so, the number of calls I was getting for a while. You are. I did that. And they've still an upgrade. That's why you were having problems. I return that plane again. You don't want to take my This way we'll have a lid too. Well, true. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about Okay, let me get the dogs some plates. They, they know we have more plates. I know Genesis is to you, but it still works around here. <laughs> Everything gets pretty long. It's a pre rinse. Come here, doggies. Everybody. Saturday. Tongue range. Yeah. These people aren't muted. And they'll also be on our website. I would say the girls are getting used to Hank. Hey, Gina, can you mute your uh, microphone, please? Very, very much of the half of those chapter. Mike McGee, who has put in a lot of hours in um, putting together these chapter meetings, uh, the speakers, making sure we have this room, making sure it's set up, making sure that the audio is equipment, and then afterwards, um, editing and uploading videos to our YouTube channel. And so, Mike, I think it's very good. Amanda brings you all the technical difficulties. <laughs> Often people practice Saturday. That's the moon release. <laughs> so if you'd like to see Lake Creek Preserve, which I really encourage you to do, I um you can be there at 10 o'clock and I'll be there too. Do a plant walk with Aaron. <laughs> so mostly Gail told me to do things and I did them. Sometimes I didn't do them and I got in trouble. So I didn't you never want to be in trouble with Gail. <laughs> <laughs> You've been very generous with your time and enthusiasm. So thank you, Aaron, and your support. Really. Thank you. So um, thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt. All righty. Okay. Um, so Mike, do you want to start our, our yes. um, Zoom session? Explain. I'm just checking that everybody can hear. Yes. I'm not hearing any responses. Uh, yes. Okay, great. All right. So our challenge uh, for tonight is our speaker 
was delayed and route from Mexico. And uh, she will join yeah, she, us. She's going to talk um, about um, think Stephen about 720. Bill. Uh, so she has our best friend get, is actually going uh, to West Texas A&M um, and, and Canyon. Clear Customs and everything. We and, think about um, that is another so upcoming what we're going to do prior to that time. They're also uh, starting to. Is, um, uh, 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 can you mute, please? Or uh, whoever talking about no, the no, serious. Yeah, I'll mute your I know how to clear a room. No. <laughs> you know, around, around that area. Um, large kind of more of a large animal vet program and i think it actually encompasses even joanne 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 please mute please mute joanne school in texas and um alicia suggests that you get a blooming plant you get a bloom so you get you get the leaf you get a stem if it's not blooming so you get a leaf a stem and the whole so have three pictures of a plant that you want to ID. Um, and if you want to try a couple of plants, uh, get you know two sets of three of a couple of plants. So we're going to have a brief intermission. We'll be back around, back around 720, 725 with your pictures. So everybody go out. We've still got good light and uh, use your device that you're going to be testing tonight uh, to capture some pictures. Fantastic. So for those of you who've joined us online, hey, I'm Alicia. Hi. And if you're out there, hi. Hi. You're probably muted. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Go ahead and go to the chat. If, you're, if you just joined us online, I'm here too online. And uh, hopefully you're out there taking pictures of some native plants or non-native plants. Let's not get stressed out here. We're just here lear learning how to use a tool. And I do believe Mike has given us a time limit. Not sure what that time limit is. Mike's gonna bring, bring us up to speed here. I heard 7.20 they were supposed to be back. Oh, 7.20, well, there you go, friends. So for those of you who just chimed in online and you already have your photos, Make sure you can see, I, I use my cell phone for iNaturalist simply because I take it out in the field with me and that's the easiest way for me to use it. Um, we won't necessarily be looking at the computer version today because that will give you multiple screens going on at home and that might be too much for us to handle in one Zoom session. So I would encourage you to, if you're at home, go ahead and get on your Wi-Fi and download the iNaturalist app to your cell phone so you can play along with us. Where's my camera? You can play along on your cell phone while we use this uh, computer for our communications here on Zoom. Some of you, however, are going to be very good at iNaturalist on the computer. It has way more functions than what the phone does. We're not gonna get into all of those tonight. We don't have the time. That's more like a three hour workshop. And that's more advanced than just identifying stuff too. Like I usually ID on my phone, but it, like I set up a project for my yard on the computer but yes and if we want to do a workshop on that we can more than we will be happy to find the right folks and put everybody in a room and spend three hours on how to use iNaturalist from your computer <laughs> but tonight for those of you chiming in I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, and we'll get to it in a second but just what city nature challenge is why it's super important to scientists and to us because we're all scientists and then a brief introduction to how to use iNaturalist so that you can participate in that nature challenge. And I know we've got maybe two more minutes. I'd love to share some funny stories. Anybody get any funny stories they want to share? While we wait, we're waiting on the folks out there in Conroe. They're out there taking pictures of pine trees. All of them are getting a pine tree right now. Maybe some beauty barrier if we're lucky. Those are my guesses for the top plants that are up there at the Jones State Forest. By show of hands, I'm curious in the chat, I'm just curious, since we're, we're waiting a couple minutes for our friends to join us. If you're, on, if you're online tonight, do me a favor and tell me where you're coming from. Just drop something in the chat like, hey, I'm so-and-so and I'm from, and give us your either your state or your eco-region. So you have some friends from Fort Worth. Mm, oak trees, that's my number one guess for you. Hey, welcome from Sugarland. Good to have you. I know you're sort of on the south side, but we welcome you to our pines and prairies up here on the north side. 
We got an Austin friend. I heard it was going to snow there, but I've been in Mexico for four days, so don't trust any information you get from the internet, right? <laughs> we got a few friends from Central Texas. Glad you're here today. We do have City Nature Challenge for, it's an international competition, so this is definitely applicable for all of our friends that are not necessarily in the East Texas Piney region like we are here. Yeah, lots of friends from Central Texas. How fun is that? No, he's not on there. He's oh there. no, we got a Louisiana in the in the house. Okay, orange chip caterpillar. Welcome from Baton Rouge. We're glad you're here. Sounds See, like my friends are getting back from their little plant hunt in Conway. I'm, I'm sure I've never seen one. Really? And they have well, no well, idea we can hear them. <laughs> Okay. Welcome from the Rolling Plains. Glad you're here. Looks like we have a good mix here in on our in our online. Yeah. Oh, here. Okay. Here's the other one. Louisiana. That's super fun. Glad to have you. Have you seen that one? I've seen that. Yeah. And then we've got some folks from the Piney Woods. We got lots of folks from Texas. I saw a Salado sneak in there. To the red spotted purple. We count that. We'll take yeah, we'll take pictures on the same tree. What is that? Black cherry. Just black like cherry. Yep, there go the beauty berries. Just starting to leaf out. Mine too. Just saw the leaves a couple weeks we ago. Most of them off that tree. And ones I thought for sure were dead. Nope. Flushed right back out. I'm so glad I didn't cut them back all the way. Yes, Jackie, I agree. That's the friends. That's our friends that yeah. are in the room. And as soon. Yeah. Those are all back. We'll get them to fight. I promise. Okay, Mike, are you guys ready there in Conroe? Yeah, so everybody's ready there. So I guess okay. if you Okay. Um, so let's do a quick favor a little housekeeping before we start. We're going to want to mute our microphones. So mine's the only one you're going to want to hear, and let's have everybody else muted. That'll just help with the background noise. And it got awfully quiet, didn't it? Hello, friends. My name's Alicia, and I'm coming to you from my home office. It's been quite a wild ride to get myself here, but I appreciate for your patience. Currently, I work for Harris County Precinct 4, and I'm a naturalist in Harris County. I work at Jesse Jones Park and Nature Center. So if you are local, feel free to come out and visit us at Jesse Jones Park and Nature Center. It's off 1960, right by the airport. And um, I'm glad to come to you tonight. We're gonna to talk a little bit about biodiversity for starters. So I know you've gone on a little excursion, but let's roll the train back for a minute. And I'm curious, why is it important for you, specifically you, to identify and protect biodiversity? Maybe we think about that for a second. And then if you have some ideas, drop them in the chat. Or for those of you in the room at the State Forest, maybe have a, a conversation with your neighbor. Why is it important to you? I'm sorry, as the fire trucks roll by, it's been crazy. Why is it important to you to protect and identify biodiversity? So I'll wait a minute. You can drop an answer in the chat or maybe share it with your neighbor in the room there in Conroe. So I see Jody said she wants to be a good steward. Yeah. We want to get those natives to grow. Absolutely. And it's hard to know what the natives are if we can't identify them. Mike, you want to share something from the room? Uh, can you hear us? We can. Um, well, um, so if we have questions, we'll just. Um, you we'll, can drop them in the chat. We'll drop them in the chat or we'll sure. try to. We'll inter try to interrupt you. Do you want no problem? Do you want a quick in introduction? <laughs> um, uh, I, nah, if unless you want to give one. Um, I yeah, think we're good. Yeah, we'll I think you're pretty on. cool. You used to be a high school teacher and a <laughs> I coach. I did. And she's taken students on hundreds of field trips, both locally and internationally. Uh, currently, she volunteers on the board of the Texas Association of Environmental Education. She's a master naturalist and a certified environmental educator and a member of the Pines and Prairies chapter of NIPSOT. And uh, once upon a time, she made led field trips for the Nature Conservancy of Texas. And it says here, this uh, you know, it's all on the internet, so it's gotta be true. Your favorite location is the top of Dolan Falls, 
on the Devil's River, which I had to look up, and it looks like a really cool place, but I've never been there. And she earned a BS in biology and speech communication from Trinity University in San Antonio, where she also ran cross country and track and field. And in her free time, she gardens for blueberries and butterflies, and she's a regular fan of the Houston Astro baseball games. So that's uh, that's what you can find on the internet. Thanks for finding that, Mike. Thanks for sharing. Sure. I'm like an onion, the layers just keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, included in that, I'd like to add, I, I too, as we are introducing here biodiversity, like biodiversity is super important to me. Um, and I've tried to hone that in with my students, no matter if you're a student right here in my little classroom right now, or students that I have at the park in the nature center where I work, or students that I've had in the past in my high school science classes. So as a true teacher, we're gonna give you some objectives today. I'm going to, so when you leave my little session here, it won't be very long. Um, hopefully you will be able to learn how to use iNaturalist and know how to participate in the City Nature Challenge, which is coming up. So these are some of the things we're gonna try to attempt today is, can you actually log into nature to iNaturalist? We're gonna go with some basic features of it and do some practice. Um, I'll show you a basic feature of the website, but we will not get into the nitty gritties of the website today. That is a three hour workshop not a 20 minute session on Zoom on a Wednesday. So if you would love a deeper dive into this, there are some great videos on YouTube on how to use iNaturalist hardcore. Um, hopefully you're gonna learn how to tag somebody else's observations and then how to participate in that nature challenge, which is international. So everybody that's joining us from Central Texas, Weatherford, even Louisiana will be able to play along. Okay, so step one in the chat, well, hopefully you know how to use the little emoticon. Give me a thumbs up if you have downloaded iNaturalist onto your device, or we can use it on the computer if you're joining from home. And I want to say note that this is not the Seek app. So there are two different apps from iNaturalist. I think I have a slide on the next, there we go. This is Seek. So if you're in there, make sure you have an account and you'll have to create that yourself. Don't forget to write down your password, I know. I know, passwords, right? But this is not the Seek app. So this app is the one that I love to use at the park for my first time naturalists. It is ba it is running on the data that you are going to hopefully collect because you are now master naturalist or master gardeners. No, wait, this is not master gardeners, native plant societies. That's okay, you're still masters at something. <laughs> um, it's using the data from iNaturalist to drive the Seek app. And what's great about Seek is this is the one I can use on my phone and I can just point it around. I can take multiple angles of a plant and it will spit out the genus and the species of the plant. In this are also challenges that are based on where you are. So on Monday at the park, we had the kids download this app with their parents because we're doing family programming right now for spring break. And it has an automatic challenge on there. So it was as simple as saying, okay, kids, hit go on the challenge. And based on where they were located, it told them to find these five butterflies, these five plants, and these five birds because they knew that they'd been seen in the park in the last few weeks. How cool, right? So if you have kids in your life, Seek is a great app for them. Or if you're looking for a super simple way to just identify plants in the field, I would use the Seek app. Because iNaturals can be a little more cumbersome if you're out in the field. Like sometimes I see some of you on here, we go tromping through Edgewater Park, which is a super secret prairie. Not really, it's not super secret. You guys are always welcome there. But that can be a little cumbersome out in the field if you're out there and it's like, what is this plant? Um, sometimes iNaturalist can be a little heavy. So there's my plug for the Seek app. But today, oh, okay, we're gonna try the Vaughn. Let's just see. If this don't work, we'll just move on, okay? Everybody bear with me here. Mike, you're gonna have to give me a thumbs up if you guys hear sound. Wait for it. Not hearing sound. No sound? I'll just narrate. It's no big deal because the graphics are great. Can you see the graphics? Yes. Okay, let me back the train up. So now that we're going out on the field, here, let me pause. For my friends that are playing along at home, do you hear the sound? Somebody go to the chat and give me a yes or no in the chat. 
No, perfect. Great. We'll just we'll just ad lib. It'll be super funny. I don't have the cute little music playing in the background, but I do have a cute little gecko. All right. So we see really cool things in the field, right? And we want to make some observations on iNaturalist. So step one, we got to take a picture. So notice, and I'll give you the details on that, but all we do in iNaturalist is we click on observe and we just point and click. So we can review pictures. If you don't like your picture, you can change it. And then we click on a little thing that says what we see and then it's gonna give us lots of options. We have to know a little bit of nomenclature to make this happen. And then we get into the details. So we can add lots of different pictures. We can make some notes. We can identify where we were a little more specifically if we don't have geolocating turned on. We can add it to different projects. So there's lots of different options in here. Then we get to share it with the world, literally the whole world, which is cool. Which means if everybody sees it, they can then help us crowdsource what that might be. So let's get into some of those details. Okay, are we back to the slides where you can see it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm going to go check my chat, make sure my friends here are doing good too. Okay. So here's, and here's just an in general slide of what iNaturalist, basic, what it can do, right? So we make our account. It's gonna, we have to click on where we saw it. So you have to make sure that we're setting some geo privacy. We turn some things on and off on our phone. We're gonna figure out what we saw and we can get as specific or as general as we know because what's great about this, citizen scientists out there can help you identify all the way down to genus and species. There are some great identifiers out there. We record when you saw it. We see trends and data over time. And then give us some evidence. If you can get a photo, sometimes I get sound recordings of birds. And if you can upload that, makes the data much better. Okay, so there's a few functions and I'm currently using the version of my phone, right? So if you are playing along at home, open iNaturalist on your phone, which I need to do right here. So I can play along with you. And it's gonna give you a home screen. And so if you look at the very bottom of the home screen, you have five different options. Sorry, I have to sit up my, I have two screens going here. I feel like a air traffic controller. So at the bottom of your screen, you should see five options. And I want everybody to click on the option that says explore. And when you do that, it should zoom in and there's a blue dot, that blue dot is you. And in theory, it's showing you where you are. So everybody now sees that I live near the Road Crystal Springs Drive. So where you guys are located, it should show that you're at the W.G. Jones State Forest or Louisiana or Salado, right? Okay, now we'll click on the one that says me. And it's got the little funny head thing. And when you do that, it's it may show zero observations because you've never done this before. Or for mine, that's an old one. I've got, not to brag, but I'm at 1,092 observations, but I have got like zero in the last few months. I got to work on that. But you're welcome. To, so those are your observations, okay? Now, when I'm looking at the me tab in the very top right corner, and on my phone, it's under where my battery life is. But in the top right corner, there's that little cog, and that's going to be the settings. So just note to self, if something's not working right, sort of like we did here in Zoom a minute ago, we may have to change your settings, and that's how to get to it. Okay. So now that I'm in my settings tab, here's just some helpful tips. If I look in the top left-hand corner, usually on your cell phone somewhere up there, it's going to show you how uh, many bars you have. Hey, Mike, do me a favor and hit mute on your um, in the group. Oh, don't hit me. Mark, it may be Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay, hit mute. Or I'll just do it for you. There you go. Never mind. There we go. No, back, no background noise. I got you. Okay. So if we're looking at our settings function, sometimes you're having super slow uploads to iNaturalist and it gets really frustrating. Well, that's because you have no service. 
So there's workarounds there. So just note to self, okay? If you're like, why is this app taking so long? You don't have any service. You're in the middle of nowhere. Um, you may need to turn on auto-complete the names if you don't want to type the whole thing. That's kind of fun, right? I turn mine off because it just, it kind of freaks me out a little. If you have terrible, uh, if you're in the middle of nowhere, you're going to want to turn off that automatic upload. So for example, when I'm at an Edgewater Park, I do not upload any of my unnatural observations. I make them all in the app. I go back to get on Wi-Fi at the park. And once I'm on Wi-Fi, then I go in and upload everything automatically and it goes so much faster. It doesn't drain my battery life and it doesn't slow down my account. I can just move right through the field. Hopefully that made sense. The other thing you might wanna do is click on suggest the species because then it's gonna tell you what it thinks it is. And that's really neat. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not, but it's getting smarter every day. And then finally, there's lots of different versions of this iNaturalist, but most of us, I bet 99% of us are gonna be right here where it says iNaturalist, okay? So that's what that should say what it says right there. Okay, now that we've got all of our settings, let's move on. So on the bottom, the same spot where we toggle, go click on the camera button that says observe. And then on your phone, since we're clicking on observe, you all had a little bit of fun time at the beginning as you took a picture. So when you click on observe at the bottom, it's gonna give you some options. You could click on camera and take a picture of, I don't know, the house plant on your desk, but you could also click on photo library, which is what I want you to do now. So if you're down there in, under observe, click on photo library, and then pick one of those photos of the flower that you just saw outside or tree or pine tree, whatever. So you see that here in my graphic is I can pick a photo I've already taken. And then voila, this is like the number one graphic of all time. And I straight up got it off the iNaturalist website. But if you're like, wow, I need some notes, pull your phone out and take a picture of the screen right here. If you're at home and you're following along online, screenshot, screenshot this shot, this picture right here. This is from my iPhone users. I have the next follow-up slide for the Android. Okay, now that we've all got a cheat sheet, when I've pulled up that observation and I've got the picture right there on my phone, I'm like, what do I do with it now? Here's what we do with it now. We can add more pictures. I'm going to encourage you, and I'll show you here in a second, I'm going to encourage you to take lots of photos of the same plant. And so there's a place in there to do that. There's that little, uh, I don't know if you can see my arrow moving on the screen, but I'm gonna pretend you can. Yeah. There's a space right here. Yeah. You can see that? Okay, number two, right there, that's where we go add more pictures. So if you got multiple pictures of the same plant, yes, go click on that plus sign and add them. Even if they're not very good, I'll show you how to take a good photo in a minute. And then this is the fun part. This is like the magic right here for number three. It says, what did you see? And you're like, I don't know. Click on what did you see? And it should give you a suggestion. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's a filter. It says show nearby suggestions only. You can turn that on or off. I leave mine on because I'm looking for native plants when I'm usually wandering around the park. And if I turn that off, sometimes I get some weird stuff. But sometimes when I find a weird plant at the park and I'm like, this is not native, where did this come from? I'll turn off that nearby suggestions filter and then I sometimes have better luck identifying. That didn't make sense. Holler at me in the chat and I'll read. Right, Chris, I've got a, I have a slide for you for the Android, just wait for it. This is for my iPhone folks. You're next, Chris. Okay, so for those of you that are using the iPhone, we've hopefully done steps one through four. Five should be automatic. And if you're on Wi-Fi, click six, we're gonna save it. 
Oh, and mine gives me some warnings. It says, hey, you didn't turn on your phone. Go back and fix something. So just kind of follow along. It'll prompt you. And then to upload, see, I've got one. Right, oh, where's my camera? About the same thing you guys do. I got I have to hit upload on mine because I turned that off because I'm usually out in the field. Some of yours will automatically upload depending on where you have that service. Okay, so for what, so for some of you guys are playing around here, that's cool. Let me get Chris on the Android. Here you go, Chris. And for my other users at home with the, with the Android, take a picture of this slide. This tells you how to do it. So for my Android users, you see that it's very similar to the iPhone. Your menu is just in a different place. So once you go find that menu, same thing, click on the observe button, which is gonna be a big plus. And then everything else is the same. It just looks different. It goes in the same order. Okay, I have tips and tricks next. So here's what I want you to do. If you're in the if you're in Conroe, do me a favor, tap your neighbor and make sure they're good. See if you can help them out. And for my friends who are in the chat, because you're visiting me from Louisiana, questions in the chat. If we're just talking about basic functionalities here, right? Nothing in here. Right, Lisa. So sometimes our location gets funny, so we have to go back to our settings. And I'm answering Lisa's question here about automatic settings. What you see. Go I'm going to get there specifically for you. Hold on. So, so they're only sure of that. And this is all the possibilities that it sees. So when you upload it, it's not there. Say what they think, but they don't do it as much with plants as they do with fauna. Okay, Lisa. So she's asking a question about my settings didn't pop up. So Lisa, what you need to do is go back. Ooh. Yeah, my you can edit your observations. So if you're having trouble getting things to load, I'm going to go back here to this screen, Lisa. Go to your observation. So we use that. Menu at the bottom, click on the camera. That was from, but I just did it. And it's going to give you your list of observations. I'll show you my phone. So there's my list of observations, right? So mine right here says unknown because it has no idea where I am. I turned it off. If you click on that, there's my observation. That's a dogwood. Go up here and click on the edit button. And then you can tell it where you were. So when you click on geo privacy, which is step number five, you can go in there and set that. You can set that to be open privacy, or you can automatically just pick your location. So right there under number four and five on the on the screen there. Yeah, if you set it to open, you have to go tell it your location. Hold on, let me see why. And make your own This shell. Pretty cool. Lisa, I'm working on trying to see what's going on. Southeast Asia. I think it's right. I it was not live shell. Oh, I know why it might be, Lisa, because when you took your photo, it, you might have that turned off as a setting on your iPhone. And if anybody out there can help me with this question, I'm totally guessing here in troubleshooting with Lisa because her automatic locations are not showing. I'm wondering if it's on your a photo that you took and you don't have location setting for that photo. So when you uploaded that photo, your phone doesn't know where you took that picture. So that's going to be a setting in your iPhone, not a setting in this app. That's my best troubleshoot for you, okay? Okay, are there any other questions from my at-home audience before we move on? 
Hills area. It doesn't auto populate. There you go, Beth. Thanks, Beth, for the win. Oh, it looks like it. Look like. Why do you even ask? Thanks, Steph. Everybody's good there. It is Steph. When you do your digestion, okay, Mike, you guys ready in the room? Can I show you some tips and tricks? Yeah, we're, we're teaching each other here. That's perfect. That's what we wanted to have happen. <laughs> yeah, we, okay. just, we just figured out how to do compare one of our oh. <laughs> one of the people here. Okay, so but you have to do it at that stage. Yeah, when you have your picture up, you can do the pair. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah I like that. I like that. Thank you. Dude. Okay, Mike, I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks, okay? All right. All righty. So if we look here, when we take photos, this is different from taking a photo that you're going to put in a frame and hang it on your wall. Instead, we want to take pictures to tell the computer system because it's using AI software. Hey, here's what I see and I want to give you different angles of what I see. So you'll notice here, I try to take a picture of the leaves and I'm showing if they're alternate or opposite and I took them on the whole stem. And then I zoomed in for real on that flower. And then I took a picture of the whole plant. And sometimes I like to provide scale with that. So I'll put my hand in there so that I know if it was giant or really small. You can kind of see in the background there, I'm right there at the park. I'm on the, I'm on the sandy beach at Jesse Jones Park, right on Spring Creek. Kind of fun to take that, to see where I was there. But notice that I have three different versions of the same plant. So what sometimes when we log that into iNaturalist, it will help us get better data. Or sometimes it's still going to be pretty general in what it's identifying. And that's okay. Because citizen scientists like you and me and everybody else in the room tonight can go log on there and go, you know what? I have been to Jones Park. I have seen that plant because you've given me so many different ways of looking at it. I know what that is. And I can go in there and type it in there. So that's really helpful if you take multiple pictures of the same plant. Here's another tip. We're going back to freshman biology, friends, and I don't mean to insult any of your intelligence, but for some of us who are like, oh, what are these names and why are they in Latin? Let's remember that we identify plants. We go from domain all the way down to species. And domain is very large. And then our species is as, must, as specific as we can get. And this is almost all in Latin. So when you are pulling up plants on iNaturalist and you can have it set to either identify it by common name, scientific name, or both. And so if you're getting words in Latin and you don't know what it means, maybe turn on the back to your settings button. Go turn on how to have it turn on the common names so that you'll know, oh yeah, that's a dogwood as opposed to what it is in Latin. And additionally, if it's not auto-populating or you're not quite sure about a plant, don't guess. Just identify the taxonomy where you are most confident. So for some of us, we're going to find something strange out there and you may simply identify it as kingdom plantae. And you can do that. So go back to your phone and I'm going to go back to the magic slide. There's the iPhone. There's the Android for Chris. Let me get there with you. Go pull up one of your observations. To do that, you want to click on the camera button down there in our menu. It's going to pull up. Oh, no, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. You want to click on the me button, which is this one. Okay, I'm in the right screen now. You want to click on the me button at the bottom and pull up one of your observations. And you can edit that observation. So let's just edit one now for fun. So I've pulled up that observation by doing so. I just simply click on right there where it says air potato. I can just click on that darn air potatoes. And then in the top right hand corner, it's going to be a button that says edit. And then for Chris, here's your Android. You got to go pull up one of those observations. OK, so what are we doing with it? I just want you to open it up, click on what did you see, and in that search bar, type in plant. Right? And it pulls up kingdom plant. 
If you have no idea what it is, just click Kingdom Plant. Because if you try to identify that as something that it's not, then there becomes a whole lot of confusion out there, right? Like, well, were they sure? Is this really a naturalist? Do they know what they're talking about? Were they right? And then people on the back end on the computer are like, are you sure? Other, the better option would be if you just clicked Kingdom Plant, then somebody who really knows is going to log in there and go, oh, I know what that is. And they're going to type it in. Hopefully that clarified that. Oh, there it is. Look, I had the picture up there the whole time. All right, so we're pretty sure. So if I'm looking at what the computer is going to suggest, it's going to give me a suggestion. It's like, I think that's Golden Banners, the common name. But then it's going to go down at the bottom and say, it could be one of these, and it's going to get more specific. If you know which species it is, pick the species. If you don't, don't pick it. I'm going to hit pause right there. Does anybody have a question about that? None? Well, that was easy. I have to call my friend Gudrun. If you guys know Gudrun up here in Kingwood, she knows her species. So if she says it is what it is, I'm like, yep, and I'll put that in there. If Gudrun is not standing right next to me, I usually just identify to the genus. <laughs> okay, so we already did this. We took some practice, right? So let's try some new functions in here. Alrighty, so at the bottom, I want you to go back to your menu. And Chris, you got to go to the side where your little menu is on the Android. Click on the Explore button. And then it should pull up the map of where you are located. And there's all these little tags. So you see right here that blue dot? That's me near Crystal Springs Drive. And there's all these little things. I don't even know what to call them, tabs? Pick one. Doesn't matter which one. So you'll see I've done that over there on the side. And this is what it's going to pull up. It's going to pull up a picture of somebody else's observation and what they identified it as. If you select this little call out button right here, and on the Android, it's going to look different, but I think it's the same app. It's the same function, functional icon. So we noticed that this was taken near my house. Somebody's on Willow Point Drive. It's a casual grade, which means only one person has identified this as some sort of winged insect and it needs some identification. So we want to help them get to research grade. We want to positively identify this. So if right here, I select that call out button, I can then suggest an ID. So go ahead and click that, say suggest the ID. And you can now go in there and add on an identifier. If you're like, I know exactly what that is, or I can get you farther down that line of taxonomy. They're at class. If you can get to genus, because you know the genus, go add that data. So I'm going to give you a second to play with that. Oops. Give you a second to look at that. See if you can't make an addition, perhaps, to somebody else's observations. And I'll leave this up here for a second so you guys can chat that out in the room in Conroe. And if anybody in the chat's like, what, Lee? Drop me a question. Okay, now you've all gone down a rabbit hole, haven't you, right? It's a little addictive to get on here and start observing other people's stuff. Everybody just hit pause. It's okay. There's plenty of time for this. <laughs> We're going to move on. There is a web version for this, way more detailed. So for those of you at home on your computers, you can do this from your computer. Sometimes at the park when it's raining, I'll get onto iNaturalist and go see what people have been looking at in the park and try to identify that, and then it helps me see what are people seeing in the park. So just note to self, there's a web version. Okay, so is this actually helpful? Yeah, so there's plenty of times when we've all looked at each other and gone, do we see what we think we see? And I will go to iNaturalist and see if anybody else is seeing what we think we see also in the park. So what you see here on the screen is that's 
a nature center and all of these different things just from this one screen share. I can see what it is, where it was, when they saw it, when's the last time we saw it. The other day we were talking about an orchid and I was like, when does that thing bloom? I went back in there and pulled up some people's data from last year to see when it bloomed. So I knew, I remembered where it was, but I couldn't remember the time of year. iNaturalist helped me do that. So if you sometimes you're wondering, is my data really helpful? Well, I'll tell you, yes, I use it probably once a week, if not twice a week at the park, just for my general line of stuff. Fun for you? Totally. There's lots of applications here, right? So let's talk about City Nature Challenge because I want to be conscious of our time. So the City Nature Challenge starts April 28th. Make note, write this down or take a photo of the screen. It starts April 28th and ends on May the 1st. And if you live here in Houston, Galveston, Shout out to my friends in uh, Houston Galveston. You are on the national champion team. How fun is this, right? Uh, for those of you in Central Texas, come on, get it together. I'm just teasing. So it's a conglomeration, at least here in Houston. We have a lot of people on board for our team, which is one of the reasons why we do so well in this competition is because everybody in Houston plays along and everybody's participating. And I'm going to encourage all my friends that are in NIPSOT chapters in other areas outside of Pines and Prairies, that you guys really encourage your chapter to come out during these dates and increase your numbers of observations and critters that you see, because we need some more data and we need you to help us. So let me give you a few more details. So here's just some results from last year here in the Houston area. We were number two in Texas to Dallas for the number of people who made an observation. 31,000 people last year in that time frame went outside and took a picture with their phone using iNaturalist. That's amazing. Let's just get people to go outside, right? And last year it was pouring down rain for two of those days. So that's great. Houston was also number one in the nation for the number of species. Who knew, right? Like we think of Houston as this like hellhole sometimes. We have 3,431 different species observed in the Houston area. That's amazing. And those sort of numbers can be used for all sorts of things. Like think on the back end, if I'm writing some grants and I'm trying to get people out in the park and talk about what goes on here in Houston, this data right here proves Houston is a hotbed for biodiversity in the country and in the world. We're also number one in Texas for the number of observers. That's really cool. Internationally, look at all those critters that were found. And just think of all the people that are outside helping to find these things and to make iNaturalist more robust and to help science go, okay, what's really out there? Let's document what's here and why. Or maybe find some new critters too. So there are some awards. If you're really into like competing against your neighbors, here's some of the folks in Houston who are like top notch. So if you wanna be top notch, there's definitely leaderboards on here for City Nature Challenge. You, uh, not going to lie, but I was definitely trolling the leaderboard because I was like, I got to break into the top 100. I can't, I can't finish at 127. So you were, you could definitely get on there the last day of the competition, May 1st, go see where you are on the leaderboard, go take 10 more observations to put yourself near the top. So it can be a little bit, uh, a little bit of fun too. And uh, there's just a fun fact that the pink ladies were the most observed species in Houston. I have some theories as to why, but most observed in Houston. So I want to welcome you to the team, no matter who you are or where you are, you now have enough knowledge to participate in City Nature Challenge. All you have to do is using the techniques you learned today in the iNaturalist app, go outside and make some observations. And I would encourage it to be native plants. Let's go see what native plants are in the ditches behind your house or in the bayous. Um, come out to a city park, go see what's out there. Then after May 1st, you can make identifications online. So that second technique I showed you where you can go log into other people's and help identify them. We need to get these identifications down to the genus and the species for them to count towards the nature challenge. The idea here is let's get better data. So I'm looking at some of you out here in the room right now. You are fantastic plant identifiers. I need your skill set. So starting on May the 1st, I need you to log in to the team, which is on City Nature Check. Actually, you can just log in on your phone. I'm not gonna make this very complicated. Go back to your phone, find the observations in the areas that are around you and just edit them. Make them as specific as you can. You've got until May the 7th to complete that. 
And then for those of you who are local, you can come register for hikes in any Harris County. I have to put my plug in, right? Any Harris County Precinct 3 Park, we are hosting a ton of different hikes. You can either volunteer to help us host those, or you can just come as a participant, and we'll have some experts on those. We'll do a mushroom hike and a plant walk and a bird walk, different opportunities for you, maybe for you to learn about different critters if you're a little new to the game. Um, so there are some opportunities for guided hikes as well. And I will drop my email in the chat. You're welcome to send me an email and I can get you signed up for some of those. But it doesn't have to be in a park. It can literally be in your front yard. We just want to know what's out there. Okay, so in closing, hopefully you learned how to use iNaturalist. Now you at least have a tool you can go play with. You can participate in the City Nature Challenge. You know there's a website that you know that you want to go investigate later. We want to tag other people's observations. And that helps us to get better data. And maybe we all participate in City Nature Challenge too. So on that note, does anybody have any questions for me? I know that was very fast. But does anybody have any questions? And for my friends at home, you can definitely type that in the chat if you need to. Hey, Mike, I'm going to have to unmute you. Hold on. And Mike, for those of you in Conroe, you guys are muted, so you'll have to come off a of mute. And I have to double check that that's my actual email address. Oh, projects. Yes, we have a question about projects. So, so for, for those of us that are not in Houston, Galveston, what challenge should you, they join? That is a great question. Um, hold on one second. I typed my email address in wrong figures. They just changed it. So let me get that right so you guys can send me an email if you have any questions. All right, now we got it in there right. It's in the chat right. Okay, so in terms of projects, when you automatically upload your photos and you identify where your photo was located, it will automatically put you in the City Nature Challenge. Right, right. You don't have to do anything special. So on April 28th, you go outside, you take a picture of an American Beauty Berry, you upload it and say, I am in Kingwood, Texas. You are automatically in City Nature Challenge. Doesn't matter where you are in the entire world. So my friends, my two friends from Louisiana who are here joining us, it'll automatically put you in the correct City Nature Challenge team. Cool, right? Now, if you really, really wanna go down, like get into the weeds of the iNaturalist, there are a ton of projects you can join. This is not considered one of those. It's a little bit different. So like I'm in some projects and it's kind of fun. That's for the advanced course of City Nature of iNaturalist. That'll be in the, the workshop that Gail sets up for later. <laughs> for now, you're all, auto, you're all automatically in there. Welcome to the team. counts. <laughs> Next year, we're gone. Oh, so then that's when you turn off the geo. If it's rare, you take turn off the geo. Yeah, what's the geo? What, that, that, that is a great what, point. So it's private. Say, turn around and say that to the folks at home too about share, hiding some locations. Well, well, one one of our members here um, identified a rare milkweed and then went back the next year and it was gone. So if you identify, I guess if you identify a plant that you think could be jeopardized by showing its location or, you know, maybe, maybe a fauna as well, then you should turn off the, the location so people can't track it down. You are absolutely right. Okay. And we're going to find some of those things out there. You're right. So we definitely want to kind of hide where it is. Okay. Okay. I don't think we have any other questions. Gail, the floor is yours. Are you monitoring the, the chat, Alicia? I am, yep. I've taken care of all of those. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Alicia. Alicia. You're welcome. Thank you. Really appreciate your <laughs> your energy after coming off of planes. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it.
Thanks. Uh, so we'll end the meeting now. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us.